Hi everybody and thanks for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who has so far followed the channel by hitting the subscribe button and thank you to all of you who have watched my other videos and commented and contributed in the comment section. Those of you who have watched my other videos have already seen that I've proven that the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix produced fixed outcomes. That is an irrefutable fact and it is clearly demonstrated in the videos I've produced. I've proven that the stewards appeal was absolutely and totally corrupt and I've proven media corruption and that took the form of the um, build-up narrative presented and created by F1 TV actually building us and leading us towards this notion of a last lap racing finish as opposed to any real notion that that race should have ended beyond the safety car. The fact that the commentary team of Brundle and Crofty did exactly the same where they were leading us to believe that that last lap was going to be a racing lap as opposed to telling us the rules, explaining to us that actually in all likelihood that race was going to finish beyond the safety car and then they as those last five laps were unfolding they were um, suggesting lots of different possibilities of different ways that the race may end and they weren't in accordance with the rules they were ultimately the way that Massey broke the rules to engineer that last racing lap so none of that is authentic but nobody's addressed that nobody has actually exposed it so the concern is after all this length of time none of the world's media has actually broken it down in the way that i've done on these videos on this youtube channel and there is a lot more to come as well, especially in terms of how the media have presented it. And none of them, despite me having contacted them on multiple occasions, explaining the simple things that were wrong, none of them have followed it up and none of them have exposed the true nature of what is going on. So... We need to start looking into this and start realising the big picture of both what was going on in Formula One and actually what is going on in life. And there's some recent events that we can use which help put it into perspective and are going to help people start seeing the reality of what we're dealing with here. Now, in trying to present what it is I'm presenting, so far, I've had two videos taken down by Formula One. This video that I'm doing now is actually my second attempt at this. Um, my first attempt was here, 18 minutes long, um, visibility blocked. And it's because um, F1 TV claimed a copyright claim on uh, something I was trying to show that was on their F1 uh, YouTube channel. And... Sky Sports, Premier League, have claimed a copyright on something I was trying to use from their YouTube channel. So that video got blocked. And the two bits of footage um, that were in question is the Aguero moment, where Manchester City won the Premier League on the last day of the season, of the 2012 season, Pretty much in the last minute of the game and that's the iconic moment that everybody's seen a hundred times and it is used as the Premier League's marketing material for actually selling the Premier League. That moment was replayed hundreds of times in the aftermath and has been used season after season since to sell the Premier League as this unmissable kind of spectacle the must see okay to sell the premier league to everybody that, and presenting it as being the best league in the world so that moment 
was an authentic sporting moment. And I was comparing that with footage that we've all seen a hundred times as well. The Max Verstappen, you are the world champion, the world champion, which is what we've all now been forced to hear hundreds of times whenever we try and watch Formula One ever since the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, because that's what Sky Sports F1 use in all of their promotional videos, all of their advertising about F1 and F1 TV. So I was making a comparison between the two, but in trying to use their footage to evidence what I'm trying to say, it blocks my videos. But that is what we're up against. They don't like me using their material to highlight it is what it is they're doing. But you get the picture. You understand what I'm talking about. You'll have seen all these things, as I say, hundreds of times. But we have to overcome this. And we need to hold that this to be true. Together, as a collective effort, we will get the outcome of the 2021 championship overturn. But you need to play your part in sharing what is presented here with uh, the big YouTube channels and as many places that you can as possible to give the chance of this information being exposed to a larger audience. This channel is not going to change the world. It's not going to ever grow to a big enough size where it's going to reach a big target audience. But the only way we're going to see change is if a huge number of people are informed and awakened to the reality of what is truly going on. And the only way that that's going to happen is if the channels which have got huge followings and can reach a huge audience are able to present the reality of the situation. So I'm hoping that people that watch this and recognise the validity of what is being presented, I'm hoping that you can forward it on to places whereby people can use this and you can use it with my blessing and use the other videos and material that is on this page to present it to explain to people exactly the true nature of what took place in Abu Dhabi and hopefully it enables more and more people to realise what we're dealing with in the world at the moment and it's been going on for years. So before I get into this anymore I need you all to think and I mean really think. When you watch the event live any fan who has been a fan of the sport for longer than just the 2021 season, knows that they saw something that wasn't right. We also know that the way it was talked about by the presenters never hit the nail on the head with what exactly was so wrong about it. And to this day, it has still never been reported correctly anywhere. And this is the key. Why? I need you to all ask yourself, why? Why hasn't a single media source investigated this? Surely a newspaper, a TV station would want a scoop. They would want to be world leaders in exposing corruption, exposing something that was wrong. None of them have. Why? And yet they all know about it. I have personally written to pretty much all of the mainstream media companies in the UK and several globally and given a simple account of the true realities of what was wrong. I've had no responses, no, nothing's been followed up and nobody's presented anything. Why? These videos have been online for a few months now. Nobody's picked them up. Nobody's done anything with them. Why? Now, it's only when you realise why that you then start realising what is truly going on. Money is often the root of many evils. The amount of money in F1 is directly proportional to the number of fans that the show attracts. So, knowing that 
what took place in 2021 has had such an effect on the sport, knowing that it's attracted this audience, it's that the publicity over the event has made people wonder, oh, what's going on in Formula One then? And then it's attracted this new breed of um, Drive to Survive followers that are engaged, younger fans that are kind of excited by all the goings on. The sport is now hugely valuable, a lot more valuable than it was previously. In 2021, the value of Liberty Media increased by $4.8 billion. That is huge. But Liberty Media weren't the only people that benefited. With an increased viewership, with an increased fan base, Formula One becomes a lot more attractive to anybody that wants to sponsor. Anybody that wants to put their brands on them cars, on them drivers, gets far greater exposure the bigger the audience. So it's worth more money than investing that their, uh, their advertising budget in Formula One sponsorship because they get more people to have eyes on what it is they're trying to sell. So Formula One teams can charge more money for that advertising space. Sky Sports F1 can get more money by getting more people to buy the TV packages. The FIA get most of their income from Formula One income. So if that increases, the FIA's cut of it increases. And Liberty Media, as I've stated already, their value increased to the tune of $4.8 billion. So we start looking at the actual motivation and the motivation being money, we can then start thinking, okay, so how does it happen? How does it happen? Now, by constructing the outcome that we saw, by constructing the fact that the, 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 the whole season was decided on the last lap of the last Grand Prix of the season, in the same way that Manchester City won the title with almost the last kick of the game on the last day of the season back in 2012. That was authentic. 2021 Abu Dhabi wasn't. But by constructing that, by constructing the drama, it created a huge fury about the sport. It created media coverage. It created interest from people who probably weren't interested in the sport before. So that generates this audience, that generates the exposure. Now, there'll be a lot of people that will say, oh, there's no way that they could have manufactured it. You're just a conspiracy theorist. But as George Carlin said, you don't need a formal conspiracy when interests converge. So if interests converge, as I've already stated, who benefits? Just Liberty Media, $4.8 billion more wealthy. The FIA, who get their, their income, most of it, from F1. All of the teams, now all getting a, a slice of the pie, which, of this bigger pie, because the value of the sport has increased. So bigger prize money. Being able to charge more for the sponsorship on, on their product, on their car to sponsor their team, Sky Sports F1, being able to attract more viewers, which also means that when they sell their advertising space on Sky Sports F1 TV, that goes for more money too. There's a convergence of interest there. Everybody benefits. So, to help some of you actually understand this, I've constructed a model that I'm going to try and show you. And relate it to something else in life that helps enable you to see the fact that this model is true. And it's true to so many things. 
we think that in life government make decisions and they're made for the greater good they're made for the benefit of the people they're made to run the country in the most efficient manner to have a long-term strategy to actually lead to us all having a better standard of living improvements and progress progression and progress as a human race that's not true what is actually true is what is detailed in this model because actually the people making the decisions are the billionaire corporations that pull the strings at a level that's well above government level they lobby the government they pay governments to create policies that benefit them and these billionaire corporations own the media they own the media so they get the media to present the government policies in such a way that it does not expose how corrupt those policies actually are and then the media present it in a way that condition the masses now i'm going to give you an example of this and i can give you many but the example that i'm going to give you is about energy prices here in the uk energy prices in the uk have more than tripled in the last six months now the media we are told and we're told by the media that the reason we're all now having to pay huge amounts for our gas and our electricity and petrol and diesel went up reason for that is the war in the ukraine or it's because of brexit or it's because there's a global shortage in supply so these are the things that we've been told that have meant that the cost that we are all paying has more than tripled the reality is the energy companies have recorded record profits to the tune of billions so how does that work why didn't the government say no you're not allowed to charge the citizens of this country that amount that is an essential resource that is an essential thing that you need to provide that people need in their lives and will affect people's health and welfare if they cannot afford to heat their homes you are not allowed to charge more than this set reasonable amount that we are going to set they didn't do that why didn't they say to the energy companies if you start charging the obscene amounts that you are now charging we are going to hit you with a huge windfall tax and that money is going to go back into the public purse and pay for other services they didn't do that what they did was they said oh we as the government are going to help you all out by giving all households 400 pounds towards the cost of the new energy rise increases didn't cover it all just help soften the blow a little bit so what the government did is it took taxpayers money and it gave 400 pounds per household to the energy companies which then they gave to each household which each household had to give back to the energy companies to pay to partially pay for these huge increases that we were now paying for our gas and our electricity so you cut all that down to what really is taking place the government has given taxpayers money to the tune of 400 pounds per household to energy companies the energy companies are made billions and now 
when public sector workers, such as nurses, such as teachers, people that are essential into, into society, that make a difference, that really impact people's lives, when they ask for a pay rise, oh, we haven't got money for that. But what do the media tell us? The media say, oh, the nurses are asking for a 19% pay rise. You won't get that. So they vilify a section of the society, put the blame on them, as opposed to exposing what the government are truly doing and who is actually making the money and how they're making the money. And not exposing the actual corrupt nature of the decisions that are being made. So how does this then translate to Formula One? Well, the simplicity of it is, is if you look at who owns Formula One, well, that would be Liberty Media. Value 13.8 billion. Who governs Formula One? Well, that would be the FIA, who have broken the rules on behalf of Liberty Media to facilitate the outcome that Liberty Media wanted in order to generate that last ra racing lap spectacle in order to attract fans and new fans and a new audience to the sport. And then we have the media. Sky Sports F1, the contracted media, and actually every other media look into their ties, look at all the cross links between all the different medias. None of them are calling it out. And Sky Sports F1 have served to present the corrupt agenda and to condition people into accepting it. They totally lied about the rules of the sport. And ever since, they've provided fake validation, fake excuses, and none of it is authentic. All to condition the masses who they believe are us. And this model goes on in so many facets of society. And I can go through lots of different areas where this is true. But that's for another video. Let me just go back to something that is truly important here. And that is that actually this is not a new concept. This chap who sadly is now dead has been talking about this for decades. And George Carlin is a genius. I recommend you check out his YouTube channel and you watch a lot of his content. He speaks so much of the truth and he, he articulates it in such a simplistic manner uh, that I cannot improve upon this. The man is superb. But there's a reason, there's a reason. There's a reason for this, there's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never gonna get any better, don't look for it, be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers, obedient 
workers, people who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your Social Security money. They want your... Check his channel out and watch what he has to say. Now, if this video, if this presentation has helped some of you realise what is truly happening in the world, please share it. Please forward this to the likes of Russell Brand, Owen Jones, people with channels which have got big viewerships who can perhaps look at the situation in Formula One and use it as an example of what the media media has done and and the mechanism of how they are achieving their corrupt ends okay many journalists are muzzled by their paymasters like the bbc tried to do with gary lineker there must be some out there independents that are willing to actually expose this and use their platform to actually expose the true nature of what is going on. So what I ask from you is to please play your part by acting on this. Okay, do something. If you see this and you feel that somebody can do something with it to actually expose what the content is and to look at my other videos and expose the content of them, you can use them with my blessing, okay? We, we need to expose the true nature of what is going on, okay? And finally, can you all please check this video out? It's called The Master Plan, okay? And it's the one which has got this picture of a graph on it, 15 minutes long, uploaded two months ago, but it's only, at the moment, had 588 views. It is hugely important and it really exposes the, the true reasons behind it and it exposes how the narrative was created by the TV footage and it puts into perspective exactly what's going on. Thanks once again for your time and hopefully you found this informative and as I say, please share it and get it into the hands of people that can actually expose this. Thank you.